I'm Fiona Sampson and I'm the Professor of Poetry at the University of Roehampton and I'm a poet and I've just written a book called In Search of Mary Shelley, The Girl Who Wrote Frankenstein. I've been searching for Mary Shelley for about three years now and this exhibition follows some of that search. I think Mary Shelley is an astonishing figure because she gave us Frankenstein which is um, a story which has not just one but two enduring archetypes. The, the scientist who kind of overreaches and doesn't, doesn't think about the social and ethical consequences of what he does and the nearly human that he creates. I think we, there's a bit of us all in both those characters and I think both those characters worry us and haunt us. So she's amazing because she wrote Frankenstein She's also amazing because she wrote Frankenstein when she was still a teenager. She was only 18 when she started work on the book, 19 when she finished it. Although she was a precocious person anyway, at that stage she already had two children. One had died in a, soon after birth and she was pregnant with a third. She was experiencing family suicides. She got married while she was writing the book. She moved house while she was writing the book all while she was so young. Um, so she's an incredible role model, I think, for all of us who think, oh, there's something I really dream of doing, like being a writer, but of course I haven't got time in my daily life. She found time. And then I think the third reason Mary Shelley is amazing is that she is a romantic, and she is a romantic who lets us into romantic thought and romantic radicalism through a woman's experience. Because most of the other romantics that we think about and value are men. The exception to that, of course, is Mary's own mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, who wrote A Vindication of the Rights of Woman. Mary Wollstonecraft is famous as a feminist philosopher, but she was also just more widely a political philosopher and a philosopher of education. She was very interested in um, the development of the whole person, and she just didn't think that women were exempt from that. And although she died as a result of giving birth to Mary, Mary's father did promise on her deathbed that Wollstonecraft's ideas would go into the rearing of Mary. And that's one reason why our Mary, I think, grew up with a sense of herself, um, as she said later in middle age, she said, to be something great and good is a precept my father gave me. And that's, it's rare now, and it was certainly rare then. Her father was also a radical philosopher, William Godwin. He was a philosopher, he was a novelist of ideas, so his, probably his most famous novel is Caleb Williams, which was published in 1793, so four years before Mary was born. And he published in the same year um, an inquiry concerning political justice, which is his magnum opus, his early philosophical magnum opus. Um, influential, very much arguing for in a way, an, a utilitarian anarchism, so let's get rid of traditional forms within the family and within the state which are um, have outlived their usefulness or indeed are only superstitions. And that in turn informed our Mary and her life choices because she ran away with a married man when she was 16. He was obviously Percy Bysshe Shelley and she had children with him out of wedlock but when they first ran away it was to found a communitarian um, an ideal community in Switzerland. Um, in fact that didn't happen because they ran out of money and had to come back to England after six weeks but in doing that she wasn't just following her heart or excitement she believed she was doing something radical and important and that her father would have approved of although it turned out that he didn't and so the Mary who wrote Frankenstein had been disowned by her father. He re-owned her during the writing of Frankenstein um, because she married Percy during the, marry, during the writing of Frankenstein. But she'd been thrown out of the family home. She'd been sent exiled from the family home during her early teenage years because she had some mysterious illness of the arm, which seems to have been a profound skin disease and there was perhaps worry that she had TB or even leprosy um, and she was sent away from a, for a total of really three years so she probably had issues, she probably had what we call now body issues which you can hear an echo of maybe in her creature, Frankenstein's creature. 
So there were a lot of things that went into the making of the Mary Shelley who wrote Frankenstein. And perhaps the most famous ingredient of all is the, is the creation myth about her book, which is that in the summer of 1816, she and Percy and her stepsister, Claire Clermont, who at that stage was called Jane, went to Geneva to stay near Lord Byron, who just moved into exile there. And together with Byron's doctor, Polidori, they read ghost stories from the newly fashionable German style, Shower Roman, and they talked about the principles of life, what actually makes us animate, what makes us be alive and not just dead bodies. And Byron set them a competition to write a ghost story each, and the two who did were Polidori, who wrote The Vampire, which became the first vampire fiction, and Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein, which became the first science fiction because she put the science of how what's what's animation what's being alive together with the fiction of the ghost stories to make the first science fiction and later on indeed she would write another form of science fiction she wrote the first dystopian novel the last man is the first dystopian novel at the heart of our exhibition we've got this portrait of the young mary shelley by martin hazel mary shelley is wearing a tartan dress which was we're told, an unusual dress in London at the time. And the description that we have of her wearing that dress comes from Thomas Jefferson Hogg, who later fell for her, was very interested in her. So it's probably a fairly accurate memory, and it's a memory of the 16-year-old Mary in the weeks before she eloped with Percy. She's just hovering in the doorway of her father's library in Skinner Street, and Percy Bishelli and Hogg are there to meet, ostensibly her father, but actually to meet her. So this is 16-year-old Mary in a tartan dress. We had to guess which tartan it would be, and we went for black watch as a fairly standard. I thought that because Mary was a strawberry blonde, she would probably go for blues and greens as the most flattering colours for herself. I've just been to look at the exhibition as it's being set up, and very excitingly, in the last case is the famous page of the hotel register in the Alps that Percy signed in his name and Mary's and Claire's declaring himself as a humanist and an atheist and a lover of men and saying that their destination was hell. It's a famous um, register because for a long time it was lost and the story was that Byron had come along later and to protect Percy had crossed out his name. In fact, it turns out that it's only Claire's initials that are crossed out and Percy's name has been underlined. And the Greek version of the, the passage from Ecclesiastes in the Bible where the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, has been written in the comments column with the fool underlined and gone over in bold letters. So whether that's Byron or not who did it, someone certainly didn't protect Percy. And it's amazing to see, but it's also amazing to frame that story which we've all known with what's actually also on the page, which is higher up the page, there's, it's very discursive. Obviously, um, early 19th century hotel visitors uh, felt they could write whatever they wanted in hotel registers. So someone talking about the glory of God and then someone else um, underneath that writing a comment saying, why do people make themselves look so foolish? Uh, what a stupid thing to say, I paraphrase. Um, so obviously Percy wasn't just boasting, here I am, I'm an atheist. He was responding to the, to the comments. It's like, it's like a kind of Twitter, um, you know, it's a kind of, or, you know, or, or Facebook, you know, co conversation going on. It, it wasn't out of the blue. Funny how you're always learning things. And um, I don't feel my search for Mary Shelley has finished at all yet. I hope you enjoy yours here today.